Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, <laughs> uh, it just gets crazier and crazier. Uh, got an email from Larlo in response to my request to cancel my order. Uh, basically a email trying to talk me out of it. Um, and I listed my reasoning for canceling as I have done in the previous video. And basically told them that those issues can be addressed or they can cancel my order. Well, we all know that they're not going to address those issues. Um, that would mean stopping production and redoing the design of the spur gear mounting and the front CV axle, which would also possibly involve redesigning the front knuckle. Uh, so that's not going to happen or refund my money. Well, it has now been 24 hours since that conversation and I have no notification of refund. So, at this point, I think I'm kind of screwed. Uh, I got the feeling I'm out $662. So, I'd be interested to know if anybody else has canceled their orders, how long it took to get their refunds, if they have gotten them at all. Um, honestly, the sour taste in my mouth regarding Rilarlo is getting worse by the day. Um, at this point yesterday, I thought if Rilarlo could address the issues with the chassis and address their supply chain issues at some point, that maybe they would still stand a chance of possibly gaining me back as a customer down the road. Um, at this point, that's starting to look real iffy. Um, they're going to have to really, really redeem themselves in some way, shape, or form uh, to ever even get me to even consider buying one of their products ever again. Um, I <laughs> honestly at this point I don't know what else to say. I, I, I'm actually kind of shocked and what's worse is I'm going to be honest with you all the way they did this whole thing from start to finish uh, and what has happened in the aftermath so far has me questioning exactly what they're trying to do. Because to me, if you're going to pre-release a chassis, okay, and do what Rilarlo has done, what you're going to do, which would make sense, would be to make X amount of those chassis, all versions, say 100 each, for example, you're going to do your pre-release sale for only those chassis. You're not going to take more orders beyond that. You're going to have those chassis ready to go out the door when the pre-release sale starts. Okay, in the box awaiting shipping labels. And say, hey, this is on pre-release now with, you know, publicity leading up to the sale, as Rilarlo did. Um, and then you're going to sell those four or 500 chassis. At the end of that four or 500 chassis, that's it. Anybody else is told they will have to wait until the official release. That those X amount number of chassis was to get it out there to find issues with the chassis, get them tested, so on and so forth. All right. While there's that lull between pre-release and official release, this is when you as a company would then build up your stock of replacement parts, get your production lines ready to go for full-scale production, address any issues that are found with the chassis as well you know get your upgraded parts stocked up and ready to go out the door to a level that you're comfortable with and then do your official release and start producing chassis okay you're not going to keep selling and selling and selling and selling in pre-release to where your supply chain cannot keep up they're not ready for full production uh Uh, supply yet 
because they're still trying to get their processes in order, okay? You're going to do a limited amount, and you're going to stop at that limited amount, all right? That way, as a company, you can talk with your suppliers, see what issues they're having, resolve those issues, and then be ready for full production. Okay, Rolando has made another big mistake here. They kept selling chassis after the first 500 in pre-release. They got greedy. Okay. Now, a pre-release is supposed is supposed to be limited to a set amount. Okay. If you look at any other pre-release sale in the history of RC, that's what they've done. They say we're in pre-release. We've got 500 of these ready to go. The first 500 get them. After anybody else will have to wait for the official release. Now the common thing that happens is you'll get 500 people that buy it. Everybody else, and it'll take a little bit. Everybody else will kind of hang back and wait and see if there's any flaws that need to be addressed. But you'll have the first 500 eager beavers that'll jump in and buy them. All right. Just like what happened with the 917. The first 500 went out the door in like four hours as far as orders go. Um, the problem that Rolarlo had with that is they didn't even have the first 500 finished and ready to go out the door at the time of order. That was their first mistake. The second one is, is they didn't stop at the 500 until everybody else had to wait for the official release. Okay. And at the time of the official release, as an official release celebration, you know, put a discount on, say, the, the next 500. And then after that 500, go to full price. Okay, just to compensate those who wanted to be the first 500 who weren't able to. You know, something like that. It, it, there, there's a better way of doing it. And they messed it up big time. Um... which kind of throws off all the rest of their plans for the release. Because now they're going to hit the official release, they're going to be short on parts, the wait times are going to be even longer, and the issues that I that have been found so far aren't going to be addressed, and they're going to have even more unhappy customers. This is what kills RC companies because it's a hobby. People don't want to wait to get their stuff for a hobby. All right, They want to be able to get it. Um, they want to be able to enjoy their hobby. They don't want to be sitting there looking at pictures. Okay, it, And you could say that that's kind of an entitled attitude. It's not. It's, you know, if I go to Horizon on a new release and I buy it, they send me an email saying, hey, this is the wait time you get the, the second I click submit on the order. Okay? If it's back ordered, it's listed back ordered. If it's out of stock, it's listed out of stock. If it's discontinued, you click on it, it'll say discontinued. You know not to buy the sucker. All right? This has not happened with Rolarlo at all. Um, at least in regards to the 917. You click on any of their other chassis and go to spare parts, you'll see out of stock, out of stock, in stock, out of stock, out of stock, out of stock. Because their supply chain has never been able to catch up even with their first chassis and the demand. Okay, which, which is a good indicator for the company, but a bad indicator for their supply chain and their suppliers. Okay, you know, I'm sure they've got somebody who's making the suspension arms. I'm sure they got somebody who's uh, stamping the alloy chassis plates or cutting the carbon fiber chassis plates. I seriously, I, those probably come in in bulk in a stack in a box, you know, from a carbon fiber cutter or a machine shop or whatever the case may be, you know. And then in the Rolarlo assembly line, they assemble all of the parts made by others, which is typical, all right. Uh, it takes a pretty big facility to do all that under one roof. And honestly, Rolarlo is probably six or seven people in a small building in Shanghai, China, or wherever it is, trying to put these chassis together. And that's problem number two. 
they weren't expecting the demand. They've got five ch different chassis out now and only seven, maybe eight people trying to put them together. Guys got to double your workforce. You guys want to be an up and coming RC company. You want to break into the US market. You have to understand that people in the United States, we have disposable income. The RC hobby as a whole is actually quite large in the United States. So you bring something like that to the table in the US, you better be have the manpower to produce what you're selling. If you don't, you're going to run into issues. And I'm, I'm going to be quite honest with you. Uh, there was a hobby shop. There's a hobby shop right now in San Antonio, Texas, that I have showed pictures of the 9172, and they specifically told me, "Get yours, bring it to us. We'll, if it looks good to us, we'll contact Valarlo and get a dealership. That way, we can stock the spare parts. Okay, because they recognize that design-wise, it technically could be better than the Traxxas Fortec or the low C." Uh, 100 or the phaser okay but if the production isn't there if the capacity isn't there they're not going to be interested because they aren't going to be able to keep you know they'll probably by have one of each version rollers and rtrs on the shelf they want to have a full complement of spare parts and upgrades because that's what they do with everything else you walk into this place there's literally display cases full of traxxas parts display cases full of armor parts you know racks full of them also proline rpm uh vitavon ssd you name it they've got the stuff in stock they keep a couple of the most common parts on hand all the time especially like suspension arms for the traxxas they've got whole freaking shelves of them all right that's how they operate. That's how they would want to operate. But if they can't get the spare parts to keep a supply, they're not going to be interested in the dealership. Because they want their customers to be able to keep their stuff running. That makes happy customers for them. That means return customers for them. That also means return customers for Rolarlo. But they don't understand that. They need to understand that. They need to put on the website, this chassis, so many are going to be produced each week. This chassis, so many are going to be produced each week. Give us the information so we know there's a possibility of a wait time when we order something. Because what we expect when we go to a website to order something is someplace like Horizon who have facilities dedicated to each product with a hundred people in each one on five different assembly lines at each one producing products not seven people in a little tiny office in a building in the middle of China struggling trying to keep up with just one chassis let alone five okay and I understand Rolarlo is still trying to kind of get started. They've been in business for a little while. All right, the other four chassis should have produced enough profit to expand the workforce, a couple of people at least, to keep up with demand. Which, again, because that's not happening, that has me worried. I'm wondering if they'll get a whole bunch of, you know, a few of these things out, take what profits they've gained and just disappear into the night. And then everybody who has these things needing replacement parts are going to be left hanging. That worries me. But yeah, still waiting on refund. Or at least an email saying, hey, we're working on these issues that, that you've pointed out. We'll have a fix for them within so many days or weeks. Okay, give me that. Okay, if, if Rolara comes to me and says, hey, you're right that the CV axle could be a problem. We're looking at how to fix it. 
give us six weeks. Okay, I'm good. Or you're right, the spur gear is a little bit overcomplicated. Going to a different pitch gear, uh, we need to revise that. Give us six weeks, we'll come out with a new differential input shaft to address the issue. Gotcha, good to go. Satisfied. Yeah, we're, we're having some supply chain issues. Uh, we're working with our suppliers to get those resolved. To, you know, give us a couple of months because you know that's not a quick fix. Uh, and we should have them ironed out. Good to go. Solid. Okay, address the issues. Let us know you're addressing the issues because right now all of those issues are huge red flags. If you can take away the red flags and say, and you know, let us know, hey, yeah, we're aware of the issue, we're working to fix it, I'm good with that. You know, and as you work to fix those issues, give us a periodic update. Say, hey, we've done this, this is where we're at, this is what we're looking at doing, just to, you know, make sure our customers are well supplied with spare parts, uh, that they're not having a problem with the front CV axles, that they're able to run the gear pitch that they're needing to run for the power that they're trying to put down, you know, what have you. Just keep us up to date. You know, uh, Rolarlo has shown a tendency to try to do that. They're just, they're focusing on the wrong sections, somewhat. Rolarlo, don't don't get me wrong, okay? You guys have potential, but the key word is potential. Whether you, if you seize that potential and turn it into product, that's up to you guys. You have to make that step. You have to make that effort. But the thing is, and I've said this in a previous video, you try to do too much too quick, okay? As an RC hobbyist, I don't want five different chassis that are mediocre. I want one good one. I don't want five air, different airplanes that are eh. I want one good one. And I am myself am willing to spend extra to get that one good one. Okay, I always will be because quality speaks. If you produce two mediocre chassis, okay, and you only make a hundred bucks off of both of them, okay, that's a hundred bucks. But if you can make a hundred and fifty off of one quality chassis, you're gaining in the end, okay. Even if that one quality ch chassis takes twice as long to make as the two, or, or the same amount of time to make as the two mediocre ones. You're still gaining in the end. Okay. Qual people will buy quality over quantity any day of the week given the option. Even if the, the quality product is much higher priced. You got those who don't have as much disposable income who will always go for the lower price chassis. But for those of us who are you know, working at being dedicated speed runners or dedicated bashers or dedicated on track racers, the one quality chassis is what we're going to be looking for. This means good plastics. This means good alloys. This means good steels. This means uh, not overthinking spur gear mounting and not underthinking CV design. This means having a supply chain that can keep up. And this means properly thinking through your pre-release and your official release activities and preparations. Okay. You know, overall, is this are those, are those company killers? They can be, if not addressed. If addressed, actually show a commitment to the customer. that will bring customers back continuously and repeatedly 
And if you want to see how that looks and how that works, look at look at the big names. Arma, Losi, Corrali. Hey, Corrali isn't a huge RC company. But they're a quality RC company. Axial, same thing. They're not huge, but they do produce quality. Team Associated, not huge, but they do produce quality. And so those are the go-to companies for people who want a quality chassis. Yeah, there's certain things they have to upgrade on them, like, you know, turnbuckles and so on. Or the things that people want to upgrade on them because they look good. But out of the box, they are still a quality chassis. They're not a mediocre chassis. Okay? That's the difference. Now, am I, are you paying more for a Losi or an Arma or a Team Associated or an Axial over, say, a Traxxas? Yes. Because... Unlike a Traxxas, you get those. There are not things that right out of the box you know you're going to have to change. Most of the Armas, other than say a Basher Guard for the off for the for the stunt trucks and the monster trucks and the short course trucks, there's really not a whole lot to do to them until something breaks. You know, you have a bad landing or whatever if you're jumping it. Something breaks, yeah, you got to fix it. But out of the box, they do just fine. Okay? That's quality. I don't have to run to the hobby shop, buy the buy the RC, and a whole box of upgrades to go with it because I already know that out of the box, if I breathe on it, that those things are going to break. I don't have to with those with an Arma or a Losi. I don't have to with a Team Associated, and I don't have to with an Axial. That's what makes the difference. Okay? Yes, they chart they are higher priced RC, but they are still in business and they are still selling products because they are quality RCs. They're not cheaply made like a Traxxas with cheap plastic and then sold at twice what they should cost. They're quality RCs and they are worth the money that they cost. Even in resale, an armor will sell more for more money than a Traxxas or anything else. A Losi will sell for more money because they are a quality RC, and those guys who can't afford them brand new buy them used because that's how they get them, and that's how they keep things in budget. Okay, now the sun's kind of in a weird angle, and the lighting is not the greatest in here. Um, I'm at work. So, I mean, come on, Rolardo. I've got ex I've got high expectations for even despite the AK nine one seven debacle. Okay, which it is fast becoming. I still have high hopes for you. You have the potential. You just got to think better. Be a little bit more targeted. Okay. After the 917, you kind of need to pause for a minute. I know you got a couple others that are in development, the Desert Racer and so on. Stop for a minute. Let your supply chain catch up. We know those are coming. They're highly anticipated by many people. But let your supply chain catch up. Build your supplies of parts before you release a chassis so you can keep up with demand. Okay. Pre-release too, same thing. Make it a limited number of chassis. Once that limit is reached, pause. Say sorry, everybody. Anybody else wanting it's going to have to wait for the official release. Don't keep selling them and trying to produce them. You're not in full production yet. People understand that. Okay. First 400, first 500, whatever. That's fine. Get those done. Get them out the door. Let those 500 people find your issues in that chassis. That way you can address them. Fix those issues. Then do your official release in full production. Okay? This is what the big names do. 
this is how they fix things this is how they make great quality chassis is they're, they're not even doing publicity on something new they got a hand pick select few that they send these things to who beat the living daylights out of them come back to the company and say here's your issues okay they address those issues then they do their pre-release to see if it's something that people are interested in you know the first that first group there's maybe five of them then they do the pre-release so now they got 500 of them out there and the same thing happens people start beating on them all right any issues that come up those 500 chassis are the only ones that go out the door they fix those any of the issues that pop up with those 500 and those are usually production line issues little glitches okay they get those smoothed out all right those 500 and five are now the only ones that have been allowed out the door there's a pause while they address issues fix supply chain problems whatever the case may be then they go into full production and official release okay it's staged it's not just kind of a continuous flow it's staged and there are designed in pauses to make sure things are happening the way they should any manufacturer does that sort of thing to some degree okay even washing machines all right they have a select few they bring it out to you let them test it you know find the problems fix those issues then they go into production and advertising okay if I were to start making a chassis all right I've got on my friends list a very short list of people who I would even think about sending that to say hey go beat on this tell me what you find that's wrong they come back hey you know you got an issue with the CV joint you got an issue with the plastic of the suspension arms you got an issue here an issue there back to the drawing board fix those issues send them updated parts tell them to beat on it again they come back say yep that took care of it then I'm gonna do my pre-release I'm gonna make a select number of chassis and in my case being a single man operation it'd be like 50 okay get 50 of them ready to go say hey this is what I'm doing this is what it's for this is what it looks like I have 50 of them right now I am willing to sell for 50 people to test I am selling them to them at a reduced cost just to cover my manufacturing cost at this point sell those 50 let those go beat on them okay hey we found a new problem you got a problem in the rear differential is doing this okay back to the drawing board fix that issue send them updated parts beat on it yep that fixed it then I'm gonna go hire my staff take my parts designs to manufacturers of smaller parts you know like the machine shop to make the differential gears or and whatever the case may be okay have those you know say you know I'll pay you this much per part I need this many per week I'm gonna hire 10 people to help me put them together and then I'm gonna start producing a set number of chassis every week 50 a week until demand stops But there is going to be those pauses and limitations on everything. I'm not going to overextend my financial side trying to keep producing something I'm not ready to produce or that may have problems. I'm going to do limited runs until I'm sure that the product is good and then I'm going to go full production. Okay, that's how I, that's the smart way to do it. And sadly, is I'm not even a business major. I'm a damn truck driver okay but to me that just is common sense um, anyway that's the rant for the evening and an update on the whole Rolardo situation uh, y'all have a good night and uh, hopefully the next video will be some sort of resolution to all this either I'll have a chassis and the parts I ordered or I'll have my refund 
okay either way at this point i really don't care which happens just as long as one or the other happens all right that, that's all i care about um honestly if Rolardo says no we're not going to do the refund we're going to send him the chassis that's fine okay but it'll probably stay in the box and I will probably eventually just put it up for sale because un unless they address the design issues in the chassis itself in which case at that point I will do a build series on it but not until then um Again, y'all have a good night. Talk to you later.